The topic of this video is mathematical models building functions. This is a continuation of the previous video, and in the previous video, we discovered a function that showed us how to calculate the distance from a point on the square root function to the fixed point 1.75 comma 0. And what we got was d of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 2.5x plus 3.0625. We asked ourselves the question, for what value of x will the distance be smallest? Or, phrased another way, what x-coordinate of the point on the square root function will make the distance smallest? All right, so once again, I'm going to take a skill and concept approach in teaching this to you. First, the skill. Very straightforward. So if you want to know the direct answer to the question, what does x have to be so that the distance is smallest, you're going to need some sort of a graphing utility. I'm going to recommend the website Desmos, www.desmos.com, desmos.com. When you go to that website and you click graph, you're going to be able to enter an equation and the website will give you the graph. So I've entered the equation here as y equals the square root of x squared minus 2.5x plus 3.0625 and I get this picture, this blue curve. Since we're interested in the smallest distance, all you have to do is click where you think the curve is at its smallest, and Desmos is going to put an ordered pair there for you, and it's giving you the coordinates, 1.25 comma 1.225. Now, all you have to know is what does it mean? So, x and y. x, as we've said many times before, is the x-coordinate of the point on the square root function. This y is d of x, the distance. So 1.225 is the smallest distance. So the simplest and most straightforward path to victory when answering the question, for what x is the distance smallest, is to enter your equation into Desmos, find the point that is farthest down, click it, and then x will be the x coordinate, 1.25. That's the skill. Now we're gonna work on the concept. What does it mean? All right, so let's work this through together. So I'm going to turn off the curve, and I'm gonna turn on the square root function. This all started by saying that we were going to take some arbitrary point on the square root function, which I'm showing here in green, and find how far it is from that point to the point 1.75 comma 0, shown here as an orange line. So the green dot, which is the point on the square root function, could be anywhere. It could be at an x-coordinate of 1, like I have showing now, or an x-coordinate of 2, as I have showing now, or an x-coordinate of 3, as I have showing now. And at each different location, the distance between the points is going to change. We've already done some of those calculations. For example, when x was 0, then the point on the square root function had an x-coordinate of 0, which was the origin. Then we found that the distance between that point and the fixed point 1.75 comma 0 was 1.75. You might have noticed that 1.75 is showing here on my little calculator. I have programmed this particular website to tell me the distance from the green dot to the blue dot for any position of green dot. So if I change the position of the green dot to be at an x-coordinate of 1, for example, it moves to this location, and the orange dot shows up here, and there's the distance of 1.25. I can even push play on the animation to allow the green dot to move back and forth and to measure the distance in real time as the green dot changes from location to location to location. So here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to look very carefully at the numbers flashing by where I'm currently pointing on the screen. What's happening to the numbers right now? Those numbers are getting larger. 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5. And the reason why is because the green dot is moving further and further away from the blue dot. But I have this program so that it, when it reaches a certain point, it starts to bounce back, which it just did. 
So now the green dot is on its way back towards the blue dot, and the distance between them is getting smaller. 8, 7.5, 7, and so on. The question we're trying to answer is, what will the smallest distance be? So watch these numbers very rapidly as they go by and see if you can see what the smallest number is. It's going to reach a smallest value and then rise again. Watch carefully. Okay, there it was. You're going to get another chance to see it. So here we go, 1.75. Now we're going down. What's the lowest value? And now we're going back up again. So we can see that this animation allows us to conceptualize what's going on in this problem. And if we pick the exact correct location for the green dot, which we discovered earlier was the location 1.25, that it would make the distance from the green dot to the, the blue dot the smallest it could possibly be. Our uh, rounded value when we did the skill part of this problem was 1.225, but we can see here a more accurate value is 1.22474487139. So there is absolutely a smallest distance and knowing the way to interpret the ordered pair we got before is absolutely essential. 1.25 shown here is the x coordinate of the point on the square root function. 1.225 is the distance between the point on the square root function and the blue dot. Now, a few finer points before we call this connection of videos done. The first thing that I would share would be this. When you see this problem in my math lab, you're going to have to recognize that you need to come to this website and enter the equation that you created in order to get the lowest value. But when you take your test, you're not going to have access to this website. And for that reason, what that means is this particular part of the question will not be on your test. It will not be on your test. The other parts will uh, create the function, evaluate the function for various values of x, and so on and so on. But the very last part of the question uh, where you're asked to use a graphing calculator will not be on your test. So you just need to learn how to do that for your homework, and then you will not see that on your test. Okay, so that is the series of videos that I had planned for this first type of problem, which is where we're finding the distance from a point on a function to a fixed point.